Hello and welcome to Get a Buzz with Art. This is Ron Episcopo and today I'm really delighted to speak with William McMahon. Hi William. Hey Ron, how are you doing? So we're going to talk a little bit with William about his art and his career. So William, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, I grew up in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, um, where the University of Illinois is, and uh, I started drawing when I was very, very young, and my biggest influence um, growing up was primarily comic books. I didn't have a great deal of instruction, um, and I just practiced a lot and did my own comic books, and uh, then I went to um, school at Washington University in St. Louis, where I discovered um, etching and printmaking. I was actually in a... Um, a class on creating a comic and the instructor saw the way I did hatching and cross hatching and he said you need to try etching and I tried it and I've been doing it ever since. Um, then I went to uh, grad school and also in printmaking at Indiana University and there I was able to teach um, for two years. Uh, I was able to teach drawing fundamentals so wow. that was really nice. Now I get it. Well, I didn't know your background involved comic books and that's how you started because I could see that influence in your work. So tell us a little bit about your work. We have two pieces with us. One is uh, a little more detailed than the other. So if you want to describe the difference in the two styles, but let's start with this one. Okay, this is a, a recent etching that I did of a distorted hand. Um, I teach a lot of art in Jacksonville and I tell every person that I work with that if you want to improve as a draftsperson, the most important thing, in my opinion, that you can do is practice hands. I think if you can draw a hand, you can draw anything. Um, this one is anatomically incorrect, but um, I, hopefully interesting. Um, basically, the process is I start with a piece of copper. Uh, I coat the copper in a liquid wax. When the wax dries, um, that serves as resist over the copper. I'll then use this tool. It's a 0.3 mechanical pencil that, instead of lead, I'll replace that with an extra fine beading needle. So I get a very, very fine mark. I can then go and I'm not carving directly into the copper. What I'm doing is I'm uh, removing the wax coating called ground and exposing the copper. I'll then take that plate, put it in a bath of um, acid or ferric chloride. Everywhere that the wax is on the plate, serves as a resist, every mark that I've made that I've exposed the copper, when you put it in the acid, it will bite down into the plate and etch it, and you'll be left then with um, a copper plate with this image embossed down and etched in, into the copper. Then I'll card ink onto that plate, buff it, trying to remove the excess ink, um, lay a sheet of paper on the top of that, and roll it through a uh, printing press, which is a lot like a steamroller. Not an easy process, right? It's very um, process uh, heavy. Okay. William, very interesting. Second piece is a completely different style. So tell us a little bit about this one. Um, this is a kind of technique that came about very organically um, for me. And uh, it, I would have never, guess, pictured myself doing artwork like this in the past. I've usually been closer to representation and fine details. Um, I was actually teaching a class uh, down the road from here at Ready Arts, and um, one of the people in the class was experimenting with these water-soluble uh, brush pens. And what you can do is you can take them and um, draw or paint, and then if you add water, it, it bleeds out, and there's different colors available. And she was doing some really neat work, and the people in um, the class were all really interested in it. They're like, oh, we want to learn that. You know, we would love to learn that. And I thought, oh man, now I got to learn something <laughs> new. And so really this came about just from experimenting with marks. Wow. And I was just practicing marks and seeing what I could achieve. And I was originally adding water to it, but um, I liked it being just very sleek and graphic. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very rhythmic process. And I never plan anything out. I've done hundreds of these drawings. Um, I'll just kind of start with a mark and let it evolve, and it's it's almost like an addiction at this point. I every day I want to s sit there and and make more of these brush this pen is drawings. Really interesting, and if you haven't, I've taken one of William's classes, and they're exciting, they're fun. You'll learn a lot. So I have a uh, two last questions. Number one, how do we get in contact with you if we love these works and want to buy one from you? <laughs> Well, um, there's a few ways you can get in touch with me. Um, my, uh, through, I have a website called WilliamMcMahonArt.com. Um, 
my, my phone number. People could call me or text me at 732-742-9237, or you could um, email me at my um, embarrassingly long email address, William McMahon etchings at yahoo.com. Cool. So last question. Any artists, living or dead, that you'd like to have dinner with? Well, um, I will say, may I have two answers? All right. Okay. One would be the person who founded the Art League of Jacksonville, who I collaborated with. His name was Craig Erskine. Um, he passed away a couple of years ago, and we were working on some really ambitious uh, collaborations. Okay. And if I had another chance to get together with him, that would be a dream. And your second one? The second one would be a British painter named Francis Bacon, who did some uh, very polarizing artwork. Almost all of my artwork is black and white. He did huge paintings and bright colors, but his work um, hit me harder than anyone else seeing it in person. And he was a very, very, very interesting uh, guy who lived uh, an unusual um, lifestyle. And I would love to be able to chat with him. William, thank you so much for being here. And thank this you. is Ron Episcopo, out for today with Get a Buzz with Art.